Ian doesn't qualify for oars, and because of that, he's facing a long road to achieve his goal. Ian's keen on a career in film and television. Attitude's been providing him with work experience. His mentor is Attitude editor Jai Waite. Ian already has considerable experience. He's directed and acted in his own film. We can see he has talent. So Ian, tell me what your passion is. Our filmmaking. Um, just every aspect of it, from the directing to the editing, um, even to um, the script writing. My dream job would have to be um, becoming an editor. Ian has struggled through his school years. To get a break in the industry, Ian needs to do a film and television course. He wouldn't be able to manage without a read or writer, but he doesn't qualify for funding to cover this. Ian was tested to determine his level of need. His results were low. Officials deemed he wouldn't pass a course even with a reader writer. Yet his parents insist that with help he could achieve his goal. Without help, well, who knows? We're unsure about transition funding at this stage. We've yet to find out about that. Um, Ian is not always funded. He had uh, three always applications declined over the years, and uh, which was very soul destroying for all of us. It's harder because he does have four hidden disabilities, uh, namely developmental dyspraxia. He has a central auditory processing disorder, a uh, bit of dyslexia, and as well as an autistic spectrum disorder. So all those things impacting on his learning, um, yeah, is really hard for him. So if anybody can dress themselves and get themselves to school and eat their own lunch and clean up afterwards, they don't get all funding. We found other ways around it and um, we've, we've still managed to um, find him the best possible schooling and support possible without always funding. Um, Ian's been one of the easier ones to accommodate because he's had a passion and we've been able to use that passion for art and photography and everything to do with filmmaking to put him into classes that really interest him. For the others who haven't had that passion, it's been very very difficult. If Ian didn't have this passion, he could well end up like dozens of others, at home with nothing much to do. I'm sure he will be employed because his passion, his concentration levels are good when he was focusing on something he wants to do. So I've got no doubt that he'll be employed in, in something that he wants to do. There is a capped amount of money to provide additional support for children with high needs in primary school and in secondary school. It is kept, therefore there'll be some people who miss out on it. And of course they're frustrated because they want additional support. Schools are given money through an additional grant that, you know, that covers the whole school that is meant to be applied for helping the non always funded students be able to access the curriculum fully. So the schools get the, the special education grant to provide the support that those other students need. Okay, Andrew, we've got your path here that we've been working on here. Yeah. In December last path. year, the Employment Agency Workforce was rebranded. It's now called now? Elevator. The agency recognises the issues affecting non oars funded students. Elevator has attracted some private funding to help non oars funded students through transition. But it's only a trial. What we're really hoping is that the government will see that this works, that, that um, we, the things can develop from there with these non oars transition students so they no longer fall through the gap. And we know uh, through our work of young people out there in the community who are at home, typically with mum, not doing a lot with their lives post school, and some of them are at home, simply sitting there waiting for God. If anyone should know her way around the system, it's Sue. She's a community advisor and project manager for the Parent and Family Resource Centre. Transition time is a really confusing time for parents and families and for young disabled people. There is information out there, but it is very, very difficult to access, get your hands on. Um, and so I think also what's required for, for families and young people is a vision. You've got to have a vision, because without that vision, there are too many barriers and obstacles to, to getting out and having a real life. Okay. Even though Sue works in the disability sector, she's finding the system hard to navigate. Sue's preparing her 20-year-old autistic daughter, Katie, for transition to an adult life. 
Sue wants to guide Katie towards independence. Katie prefers the isolation of her bedroom. 2008. School. No school. It was becoming very clear to us that Katie wanted to leave school. Although she was entitled to stay to the January past her 21st birthday, she was indicating to us at the age of 17 that she'd had enough. And we would need to put in place plans for her to do that successfully. And I have to say that has been the most significant barrier and the most horrendous journey up to this point. I'm a old father, but I'm different because I have got the intellect to be able to study and I can't do the only barrier holding me back is my support and that's where the funding comes in. 20 year old Gina is one of more than 70 students at Mount Ross School Grammar's McLean Centre. Gina receives ORS funding, which is great, but it's a catch-22. That funding effectively puts her life on hold. Gina must stay at school for another year, till she's 21, to qualify for post-school funding. Now, Gina said that she's got one of those. A lot of people with high needs, like myself, go into community-based programs. Um, but I have got the intelligence, I just haven't got the physical ability. Gina's ready to leave, she's 20 now, she was 19 at the end of last year, she wanted to leave and go off and carry on with what she wants to do, which is go to university. But she needs extra support at university. So one of the things that they don't do um, at universities and tech institutes is support the students with their personal care needs. It's not a nice feeling to think all my friends have left school, they're doing what I should be doing, but I'm literally being held back because of my physical limitations. This funding is available to very few students, so it's worth having. It would provide Gina with ongoing vocational funding, covering 80% of her needs for the rest of her life. But the rules state she must stay at school until she's 21 to receive that funding. It's ironic. Gina's old enough to vote. She's old enough to drink. She's even going flatting. But she can't leave school. Unfortunately, that is still the rule. So I absolutely share her frustration. Uh, I don't think that people should have to stay at school until they're 21 in order to get that guaranteed funding. And I give her my commitment through your show that I want to fix it. 17-year-old Ryan Leach is another always funded student. He's attended Westlake Boys High School. Ryan's a high achiever. How's this for success? He scored the top mark in the world in his sixth form Cambridge Geography exam, 97%. I really enjoyed it. I don't, you don't really realise that until the end of school, how much you really did enjoy it, but yeah, school's really good. He is bright, but he works extremely hard. He's quite tough on himself. He pushes himself to make sure his studying's done and his homework's done. And because he does that, he's got teachers that support him and help him through it. Ryan's always been among the top students in his class. Attending a mainstream school has enabled him to reach his academic potential, and he's understandably proud of that mark in Cambridge Geography. I've been top in school in Geography since fourth form. And that for a boy that can't even do um, field trips or go out and touch things or see for himself what's actually going on in the world. Ryan is not prepared to stay at school until he's 21. It would seem absurd like to hold him back. Monitor the antibody or the antigens. So monitor the Ryan's antigens. decided to move on to university. Well at university next year I'm going to be looking at majoring in geography and then possibly doing some geology papers as well. Those will be my two main subjects.